Um, first, I come to thanks for attending our session today. We will give a discussion and uh, talk about how to use Intel Quick Assistant technology to accelerate the Spark workload. Uh, this is today's agenda. First, we will introduce what is Intel Quick Assistant technology. Then, we will discuss the opportunity to use Intel Quick Assistant technology in big data. Next, we will take about the high-level architecture for QAT codecs in big data. Then we will show you the performance improvement for Spark short workload after we enable Intel Quick Assistant technology in Spark. In the end, we will analyze the impact of QAT on TPC XBB queries. Mm, so let's start with what is QAT. QAT is short for Intel Quick Assistant Technology. It is a hardware accelerator. It provides security and compression hardware acceleration. The compression algorithm is compatible with the standard ZLib algorithm, but provides very, very high throughput compared with the software version. QAT makes use of a set of API to abstract the hardware. It provides the QAT zip library to help the end user to easily leverage the QAT hardware for compression related developer work. And the QAT driver and its user library is all open sourced, so you can totally free to use them. Also, you can get the more QAT results from the following website. Uh, this is today's. Um, uh, why we need to accelerate the world of computer? The reason is that the data explosion, the coming flood of data, as you can see from the left figure. And if you take a look at how much, how, and how fast the data is growing about every five years, the amount of data on the world is increasing four times. So if you look in the year 2015, uh, there are three zettabyte uh, estimation total data sitting on the world, but by the end of 2020, people estimate that there will be um, 4.7 data bytes of data, and by the year 2025, there will be totally 163 data bytes data in the world for this mass data. The fact is that we want to get inside out of the data and make use of it, not just have it sitting there. Sitting there consume all of the space. We would like to do something more interesting with that data. It means we want to get low latency because a lot of these insights are in the real-time real property. Uh, a user makes a request on it and need a faster feedback on getting inside of the data so it can respond to that data and take action. And then our services are all scale out to the global scale and so we need the ability to, to not just get low latency processing that data will be scaled out and achieve super high throughput across that data. Um, this is a typical workload in big data framework. The workload has two stages, the left map stage and the right reduce stage. Between the two stages, we have a shuffle. For map stage, we have shuffle right to write the intermediate data to the local disk. And for reduce stage, we have the shuffle read to pull all the required data from remote partition. So during the shuffle, there is a lot of data movements between nodes. So the disk read write and the network transfer may be a bottleneck. If we can reduce the size for data movements, it will be burnt the performance improvement. Also for the input and output data, it also involves the disk read write and the networking transfer. We can also consider to optimize it. As we talked, there are two types of data movement, for input, output, and for intermediate data. For the input and the output data, the data is stored in HDFS, and for the shuffle, the data is stored in local disk. So different uh, I.O. characteristics for HDFS, it usually sequence read-write, but for shuffle, it always random read-write. So put them all, we can use QAT to accelerate the following phase in data gen. We can use QAT to accelerate the compression during HDFS write. In the map stage, we can first use QAT to accelerate the decompression for read data from HDFS and the compression for shuffle write. In reduce stage, we can use QAT to accelerate the decompression during shuffle read and accelerate the compression when write the output to HDFS. 
this page shows the architecture of QAT Cortex. QAT Cortex provides provide compression and decompression library for big data framework such as Apache Hadoop and Apache Spark to use Intel Quick Assistant technology for compression and decompression. The QAT Cortex project is open sourced, so it is totally free for you to use, and you can download the source code from the link below. There are two layers in QAT Codex. The bottom layer is the native layer. In the native layer, at the bottom is the hardware, the entire Quick Assistant technology module. And on top of that is the kernel driver for the QAT hardware. We provide the QAT zip user library on the driver layer. The QAT zip user library provides API to wrap the function call to the QAT hardware for compression and decompression. On top of the native layer is our QAT codex layer. It is a Scala-based implementation, so it provides API for big data framework. For example, the Spark Hadoop have to directly call the QAT hardware for accelerate the compression and the decompression. And beyond this layer, we have unchanged big data framework and unchanged workload. So QAT codex is transparent to user. Uh, this is the configuration for the benchmark. We use three node cost and each node with two Skylake 8170 CPU and each node with 384 gigabytes memory. For Hadoop, we use three NVMe SSD, each NVMe SSD up to two terabytes capacity. And we have three QAT devices in each node. And the NIC is 10 gig Ethernet. We use CDH 5.15 for our Spark Hadoop environment. And this is the performance result for Spark sort workload. As you can see from the picture, from the, for the input side, the QAT has higher compression ratio compared with the Snappy. The input size reduces about 7%, and due to the QAT high compression ratio, and the output size also reduced 7% compared with the Snappy. Due to there are less data transfer in the network, the overall performance gain is about 14%. Mm. We also benchmarked the sort workload use Hadoop map reduce. This is the performance result for sort workload. As you can see from the picture, for the input side, the QAT also has higher compression ratio compared with Snappy. The input size reduced about 7%, and due to the QAT high compression ratio, the output size reduced 8% compared with Snappy. Due to QAT high compression ratio and high throughput, the overall performance gain is about 4.4%. Uh, this is the performance result for have on map reduce. We run all the TPC XBB query with the QAT and the Snappy. As you can see from the picture, um, for the generated TPC XBB data, QAT has higher compression ratio compared with Snappy. The do total data size reduced about uh, 13 percent. So if we enable the QAT compression during TPC XBB, we can get the overall performance again is about 13 uh, percent. Now let's analyze the QAT impact on the TPC XBB query. Uh, so why QAT can provide uh, help to improve the overall performance for the Spark workload? Compared with the Snappy, let's use TPC XBB query to analyze the performance benefit from the QAT hardware accelerator. As you can see, the key point is that the QAT has higher compression ratio than Snappy. We know that the QAT compression algorithm is compatible with the ZDIB, and the ZDIB has higher compression ratio than Snappy. But the CPU-based ZDIB compression throughput is much, much slower than Snappy. With the QAT hardware accelerator, you can get the same compression ratio as ZDIB, but since it is a hardware accelerator, so you can get a much more higher compression throughput than Snappy. So we can get a better trade-off between compression ratio and the throughput with the QAT hardware. As you can see, almost all the TPC XBB table size is lower than Snappy after we use QAT to compress. And so except the TPC XBB table size is smaller than Snappy, 
Due to QAT has higher compression ratio, we can also get impact for map drawing convention, um, parallelism, and GC issue. We know there is a parameter to set the total table size for map drawing. So if the table size is less than um, this parameter, it will use the map drawing instead for common drawing. The high compression ratio also impacts the parallelism. We know OSC field will be split to strip, and the number of strips will determine the map task number. So high compression ratio will result in fewer strips than fewer tasks. Uh, for example, from the left, we know that for the same 100 kilo recorder, the total field size for Snappy is about 256 megabytes, but for QAT, it only has 180 megabytes. So for Snappy, it has four straps, but for QAT, it has only has three straps. So in that case, QAT parallel is lower than Snappy. Uh, let's talk more about uh, in the following slide. Mm, now let's talk about the drawing impact due to the QAT high compression ratio. As we know, for drawing operations, the map drawing is faster than common drawing, but the map drawing only for small table. So if the table size is bigger than the threshold, we will still use the common drawing, as you can see from the uh, summary for the table size. Uh, for the item table, due to the QAT high compression ratio, the item table is smaller than the threshold, so we can use map drawing for item table. But for Snappy, the item table size is still larger than threshold, so it still uses the common drawing. We can see from the summary for equation time after the uh, item drawing table uses the map drawing, QAT equation time is reduced from more than 300 seconds to less than 100 seconds, three times faster than before. Uh, though map drawing is fast, but sometimes it will bring the GC issue, which will cause the performance drop due to the long GC time. As you can see, for Snappy, all three drawings use the common drawing, but for QAT, all the drawings use map drawing, so it needs lots of hyperspace. But due to there is no, not enough memory, the memory will be used soon, so the full GC became very frequent in that case. More GC time in QAT than Snappy, which caused the performance drop. So how to fix the GC issue in such case? The easy way is simple increase the hyper size. We can see we still have lower equation time compared with Snappy. So the second way is to disable the map join in such case. We can see after we disable the map join, and the equation time is lower than Snappy. Mm. And let's see some system metrics for Snappy and QAT. As we know, QAT has higher compression ratio, so the total data needed to read or write to disk is much smaller than Snappy. So from the system metrics figure, we can see for Snappy, there is a lot of I.O. wait time in CPU utilization, but for QAT, we nearly can see I.O. wait time in CPU utilization. So for QAT, CPU utilization it is higher than Snappy due to the less I.O. request. We can also get confirmed from the I.O. request figure. You can see Snappy has much I.O. requests than QAT. Uh, from this table, we, uh, from this picture, we can see if we have no I/O wait, the both has less uh, I/O requests, so QAT can help uh, uh, Spark workload by reduce the data we need to rewrite, so to reduce the I/O wait. And um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Xi. I have a question for you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, very impressive numbers. First thing, I really like the comparison between uh, the QAT and the Snappy format, like when you were just showing 14% yeah, of difference yeah. and all this. My question is around file format. So, I saw that you are using ORC files, yeah. and I wonder, did you try the same with Parquet or maybe other formats? Uh, yes, because this TPC XBB is run ORC, we, we don't test it with Parquet. Okay. Yeah. No, that's, that's good. I was just curious. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Uh, I really like your talk. It's a shame. Uh, no, uh, uh, we have you. no more questions. But thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well done.